Hello and welcome to the Hyperloop. My name is Blake. Today we're going to get started with Transpod. They're kind of in an interesting position where they want Hyperloop routes um, in between Toronto, Montreal, and Calgary and Canada. The Calgary and Canada one's really interesting, and they're pushing um, local government and thought leaders and on social media um, for uh, the region to consider Hyperloop. Um, so we see this tweet, what are your plans for investment on high-speed rail? Um, and more than high-speed rail, we're developing Hyperloop, which provides a better business case. The first investment would be 100 million from private sector for 10 kilometer test track loaded, located between, um, and this is where I don't really know, um, but they want to build the test track along a highway, which is very similar to what we're seeing in uh, Mumbai and Pune um, with Hyperloop 1 and Virgin Hyperloop 1 and um, DB World Cargo. Um, and also we've seen this before um, with the now defunct company Arivo um, that was planning to build it along a test track facility along a stretch of highway um, in a public-private partnership with the highway. So um, really interesting stuff. This is the first kind of numbers that we've started seeing. Um, 100 million from private sector test track 10 kilometers which is the same distance as the SpaceX Hyperloop pod competitions um, next goal with a full uh, Hyperloop tunnel with a bend that's going to be theoretically completed next year which is insane so we shall stay tuned with Transpod but good job Transpod and just making this really open and uh, goals for the company and Hyperloop stated publicly so that's really nice um, this is an article about Heart Hyperloop. Um, it's a little bit old, or July 30th, sorry. Um, but it's really a fascinating article. It puts together a couple press releases from Heart. Um, and it's just kind of a good overview of where Heart is, um, what they've done in the last couple months, um, and how they've, uh, they're wanting a 30 meter long Hyperloop test track um, and or they've put that together and demonstrated the lane switching. Um, it's kind of a light article, but um, we really like this. Hart is planning an even larger Hyperloop network for Europe. Um, ambitious goal totaling tens of thousands of kilometers, more climate friendly alternative to then air, um, connect major cities. Um, but they're wanting uh, a research center by 2021 with a three kilometer long test tunnel dubbed the European Hyperloop Center. The next phase is to realize high-speed test facility and acquire the right partnerships to raise the right amount of investment. Um, and this partnership is really interesting. Um, we don't know much about it, but um, they're really working with the cities of Frankfurt and Amsterdam, uh, particularly the airports, um, Schiphol and Frankfurt Airport. Um, North Holland's government recently told um, this newspaper that it would work closely with Hart to build a Hyperloop tube between Schiphol and Frankfurt. In addition um, to the possibility that the route would take less than a half an hour, the train is a climate friendly alternative, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, um, it also references this article from uh, July 26th. Hart Hyperloop wants to unite multiple European cities um, in an ecosystem with the uh, Innovation Center. Um, so yeah, it's just a really interesting article that's now being picked up by global media, CNBC. And um, one thing that it set, Hart sets apart is the lane switching technology. Uh, the company claims its Hyperloop pod would switch from one lane to another without any additional moving parts. Um, yeah, and uh, to supercharge its plans, Hart is building what's called Open Ecosystem, partnering with uh, industry giants like railway operator, Deutsche Bahn and steel maker Tata Steel. Um, it recently showed off its test track. Um, the next phase is to realize a high speed test facility with the right partnerships. Um, so, yeah, we don't know really what those partnerships will do or how companies can work with Hart, but if you reach out to them and you're interested, I'm sure they can help you. Um, we're just really interested in how it can get built. Well, Going back a number of years, <laughs> or many months, um, to May 15th of 2018, this article um, lays out the reason why a Hyperloop should be built between Mumbai and Pune, a Hyperloop-induced Indian megapolis. Um, 
will ex eliminate existing differences between the two cities across various dimensions. This is a long article, and I just want to point out that it was published by Chushkar Kanade, and he is uh, also on Virgin Hyperloop One's press release as the um, local uh, public policy advisor for India. Um, but we'll get to that in one second. Um, and over the past eight months, you know, the scenario, um, this is just a really good article. First, there was a MOU um, and, uh, you know, it's just a, a really interesting article, what the current uh, commute is like um, and, you know, the distance of the two cities, um, how it would connect central parts of Mumbai um, and a central hub in Pune, um, and what the corridor will offer to airports. Um, yeah, so it's just kind of a, a synopsis of what a Hyperloop would look like um, for this region. Um, policies may need to force an arbitration, um, some direction and purpose by assessing. Um, yeah, so it's just kind of interesting, um, and I'd highly recommend you check it out. And then uh, this happened. <laughs> uh, DP World is basically helping build uh, this hyperloop in India. Today marks a significant milestone for the future of mass transit as India announces a public infrastructure project for the first passenger hyperloop system in the world. This revolutionary new transport technology will connect Pune and Mumbai in under 35 minutes. Um, and then we see the CEO of DP World. Fantastic to see India leading the charge in revolutionizing millions of passenger journeys through Hyperloop technology. I'm excited about the future and the partnership between DP World and Hyperloop and the government of Maharashtra. Um, and then this links to the uh, press release, um, first passenger Hyperloop system. And DP World was working on a cargo pod, um, so maybe it'll be passenger cargo. Um, so the government of Maharashtra, one of the first proponents of Hyperloop technology in the world, has deemed Hyperloop a public infrastructure project, setting up the world, uh, world's first Hyperloop. Um, the Mahal Idea Committee also earlier approved Virgin Hyperloop 1 and DP World um, Consortium as the original project proponent. This is a landmark announcement for building the Hyperloop system in this region um, under 35 minutes which uh, is currently 3.5 hours or more uh, by road. The project will generate hundreds of thousands of new jobs, create over $36 billion in wider socioeconomic benefits, and create a new Hyperloop component and manufacturing opportunities for Maharashtra to export to India and the rest of the world. Um, we hear this from the Chief Minister of Maharashtra. We're inspired by the new India version, vision by the Prime Minister Shiri Narada Modi. Um, Maharaja will create first Hyperloop transportation system as and a global Hyperloop supply chain starting in Pune. Um, uh, Sultan Ahmed bin Suleiman also gets his quote in here. Um, DP World, a global trade leader and major port and logistics operator in India, uh, is set to invest $500 million in private capital to complete phase one of the project, which will certify the new technology for passenger operations, establishing India as hyperloop innovation, blah, 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 without using public funds, wow. Um, this project will be executed in partnership with DP World, Virgin Hyperloop One Consortium, and the state of Maharaja. Um, this is a history in the making, the race is on, um, to host the first Hyperloop transportation system in the world, and today's announcement puts India firmly in the lead. Um, this is a significant milestone, blah, blah, blah. So there's approximately 75 million passenger journeys between Mumbai and Pune. Expect it to skyrocket to 130 million by 2026. That's a lot. Um, Virgin Hyperloop One system can meet uh, the growing demand by supporting as many 200 million passengers annually linking central Pune and Mumbai in less than 35 minutes, um, zero direct emissions. The dynamism shown by the state and federal government um, and public agencies in India has been visionary, and the country will reap the benefits um, by being a first mover in adopting Hyperloop. Um, that's really interesting from Harj Diwali. Um, 
uh, managing director of India and Middle East for Virgin Hyperloop One. Once commercialized, it will transform the Pune Mumbai corridor uh, into a mega economic region. So that's really fascinating. Let's look, check out the media assets um, because sometimes there's goodies in here. Um, building Hyperloop India Pod, um, introducing Deep World. Uh, let's just check this out real quick. And this is some old footage. Nice. Um, and we're just going to check out the images real quick. Uh, Test type and maybe, okay, it's just group photos of the, the pod in India. That's pretty sweet. Um, now we're going on to um, Virgin Hyperloop One is transporting their pod across the freeway across the United States and they'll be in Columbus on Sunday. So go check it out um, at COSI. Um, uh, so Google where COSI is in Columbus. Um, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. there'll be STEM related activities to participate in. That's really nice to see um, and safe travels to everybody that goes and sees the pod. And that wraps it up. Let us know what you think about um, the Hyperloop in India or um, Heart Hyperloop and their open philosophy in collaboration with different companies in Europe. Um, or if you're going to go see the pod in person in Columbus. So have a good afternoon and stay in the Hyperloop.